Hi guys, uh, we're in the workshop again today now and we're on to chapter two of Methods of Cutting Steel. Originally I was going to move straight on from Hacksaw on to Angle Grinder, but then I said I'd include this, this saw on the list as well, just for the purposes of completeness more than anything else. This is a, a reciprocating saw, which effectively operates like a, a powered hacksaw. The blade goes in and out. And they're commonly called Sawzalls, which I think is a Milwaukee brand name, or possibly as well a Sabre saw, and I'm not too sure who owns that particular brand name. But anyway, what they are is a reciprocating saw where the blade goes in and out, and uh, they operate pretty much like a hacksaw. Now, they do have an advantage over other types of cutting equipment in that the blade uh, size is quite small, so you can actually poke this into quite a small area or restricted area where you might be able to get a hacksaw in with the, the frame of the hacksaw uh, getting in your way, or maybe even an angle grinder where you need to cut in a particular direction or whatever. Now, just to go through these, effectively they're, they're fairly straightforward. There's an on-off switch over here. There's a bit of a lockout then here to stop you turning it on and off um, by accident or if it's inside the tool bag. On the cardboard here, uh, when I bought the saw, and I must admit now it's one of the least used uh, cutting equipment that I have, um, I got a set of blades and they came in two types. Basically, uh, one's for metal and one's for wood. And we'll say if we look at the metal ones there and you'll see the picture there there's a little picture of a, a beam or a, a steel beam and up here as well uh, when you read the tooth configuration is 14 to 18 tpi which means that there's groups of 14 and groups of 18 teeth per inch on that blade and there's a little bim there as well which stands for bimetal and again there's a uh, similar enough to the hacksaw blades there's flexibility in the blades themselves because they're made of spring steel and then there's high speed steel or some type of harder teeth um, electron beam welded or some way attached to the, the flexible blade. Um, the wooden ones are the ones for wood. Uh, again, you see a little picture there, I'll try and hold it up, um, whereby you have a picture of wood and you'll see there that it's four to six TPI, which is four to six teeth per inch. Um, obviously the, the wooden ones won't cut through steel very well. Um, it is possible to, as well to get um, steel blades which are designed with uh, carbide teeth and obviously they're harder and should be longer lasting. So anyway, just to give it a go more than anything else, what we've done is, or what I've done is, is set up um, a piece of 8mm rebar similar enough to the hacksaw the, in the last video and we'll just uh, put a timer on it as well and just see how quickly or how easily it cuts through it. Um, if my memory serves me right, we got through the 8mm rebar, which is 5 sixteenths, in about 12 seconds with an angle grinder, and then it took us about 38 or 36, 38 seconds with a hacksaw. So what we'll do is we'll just zoom in now slightly. Right. Now, first of all, we'll mount the blade. Um, sorry, before I move on, um, that's the, the device there for uh, clamping in the blades. Um, the shoe here as well um, is sort of a flexible shoe designed to be butted up against whatever you're cutting. And in this particular instance, the shoe is actually adjustable where you can slot it out and back in. And it's, it, it's, it moves out or in uh, depending on, on what you want to use. These blades, uh, effectively what happens is the, the saw um, reciprocates in and out but what, and the material that you're cutting will be up against the shoe so therefore there will be a section of the blade which is used to cut and then out here further out towards the point of the blade you'll find that you're not using those teeth at all. The adjustable shoe then um, should theoretically um, be able to help you compensate whereby you might be able to move out your cutting point further out on the blade but I would suggest that you make sure that you do not hit the front of the blade against the material that you're cutting because again you're moving in and out in a, a very very fast reciprocating action and that will just catch the front of the blade, bend it and start shaking things all over the place. Now these are sort of quite aggressive uh, pieces of equipment and you'll see that now when we start off cutting that they're, they're, they're definitely designed sort of uh, with demolition in mind rather than a, a finer cut but it's certainly worth, worth the go anyway. Okay. Now we're set up with our piece of 8mm, uh, which is 5 sixteenths rebar in the vise. We have our stopwatch set up. Um, I'll go and cut this now. Now, um, a word of recommendation, when you are cutting, start off slow and increase your speed then, rather than going out of full tilt. So, we give it a go anyway. Right. So, 
So you can see there, uh, about seven or eight seconds at most, so very, very quick. Um, but you'll also note as well that it's, it's, it's an aggressive um, and probably not a consistent cut that you'll be making with one of these tools. Now what we'll do is, I'm going to set up a piece of plate in the device and what we'll do is we'll compare the cutting speed of this and just for information's sake this is a, a new blade in it and we'll also uh, do a cut with an angle grinder and just do a, a bit of a, a time comparison then and you know this isn't a scientific methodology by any means but it's just to give you an idea of what, what these machines are capable for. Uh, generally speaking what I've found this to be particularly useful for is um, getting into odd places to cut out a hydraulic pipe or a piece of steel that's in a really really bad place with a bit of care they're, they're very very good machines okay now we're set up again uh, what I've done is put a bit of uh, mild steel plate in here this is 80 mil by 6 mil thick plate 80 mil that way obviously which is about three and a quarter inch and quarter inch thick so what we'll do is we'll take our saw or our stopwatch set up and what we'll do is we'll try and cut that first line there that we've marked out and just time it and see how we get on and see can we maintain some type of consistent cut right about 23 24 seconds and it did a pretty good job took it fairly handy but fairly good finish so you know it is eminently possible that we can uh, we can cut with one of these uh, to a degree where we could actually use the steel afterwards now um we have our grinder here to hand and safety glasses on so we'll just run the same again and see can we do a rough comparison So 50 seconds, um, so you can see there's a, a significant uh, time difference or a significant time saving with the, with the reciprocating saw. Now we're back at the desk again and when I reviewed the footage from the workshop I noticed that um, mounting and demounting the blade was um, way out of frame. So I just want to go through that here. Um, one of the advantages with the newer versions of these saws is that um, you can mount the blades uh, normally, whatever normal is. You can also mount them upside down like that. So the body of the handle and the battery aren't in your way then and you can actually cut into something uh, quite flush. And in addition to that, there is also the option then to put them on sideways. So, so again, uh, just opening up flexibility as regards direction of cut or getting into an awkward area. And obviously that could be rotated 180 degrees to, to point the other way. So overall, uh, as regards the reciprocating saw, I was quite surprised myself at how quickly it cut through the steel plate, the 80 mil by 6 mil, which is three and a quarter by a quarter inch plate. Um, one big advantage of these, or sorry, one of the big advantages of these is that they don't uh, create sparks uh, uh, in comparison to an angle grinder. And the second uh, advantage then is uh, for ease of access into a very tight or restricted area whereby if you can fit the blade in, you can obviously cut something then. So that's about it. Um, I'll stick up just uh, for information's sake on the screen there, um, sort of a current pricing for this and possibly uh, the current pricing for the angle gr grinder that I used as well, so that you'd have a point of comparison. And I'll, I'll also stick in pricing for 
a set of blades or a blade and then comparable um, discs for an angle grinder just just to allow you to make a comparison and um, overall I was quite impressed with this uh, above my expectations as I mentioned and um, it cut quite cleanly and without any dust or sparks so you know there's certainly advantages there for that okay i hope you found this helpful and um, if you have any um comments or questions or anything like that stick them down there in the comment section all right thanks very much